Hey everyone, welcome back to the Microwave Lab. Today I wanted to talk about an easy radio upgrade that just about anybody can do, and that's adding RF chokes or coils or inductors to your power line on your radio. And here I have an old Ranger radio that's uh, uh, an old uh, radio head friend of ours gave to me to take a look at because it's not working properly. Uh, so uh, no, it's not transmitting or it's, it's transmitting very weakly. Anyway, that's a topic for another video. But but uh, anyway, I noticed in poking around in here that this has. Uh, coils installed on its uh, its input power uh, power lines so if you look over here we have one one coil here and one one coil here and these are the uh, positive and negative power lines coming in and so what these do is they block uh, noise or AC signals from coming in to, uh, in through the power and uh, anybody who's into radio will tell you that having clean power is, ve is very very important for signal integrity and for, for um for the radio to work well, so uh, this is an easy upgrade. Just to swap it in for your. Um, I'll just come over here to my my Bearcat 980. So these power wi these power wires right here, I would just take these out and uh, and solder in one of those um, on either side one of those uh, one of those coils or inductors. And so I, I bought a few, and I'm gonna we're gonna take a look at them over here. I have the network analyzer set up, and uh, we're gonna take a look at a few of these here um, that I got from DigiKey. Uh, I have two options here. One is these, this little tiny one, um, and these are they're advertised as inductors, and so uh, inductors are measured in, in uh, units for inductance is Henry's. So this is a, a one micro Henry um, inductor, and then these larger ones over here are uh, four micro Henry's. And um, these are uh, this one's rated for eight amps, and this one's rated for seven and a half amps. So that's plenty uh, plenty enough for the for my radio uh, just by itself. Um, it has a six amp inline fuse, so I wanted a little bit of headroom above that. So um, we're gonna we're gonna hook these up to the network analyzer and see how they um, how well they attenuate uh, a radio signal that's uh, that could possibly come in through your power line. So if you think about a, a mobile application, if, it, if you have a radio in your car, uh, then um, you could have noise coming in from your vehicle, ignition coils, that kind of thing. Or if your power line runs next to your antenna wire, you could have some coupling there. Some noise could leak out of your antenna wire and, and come in, come back in through the power, or vice versa if you have a, a, some sort of really noisy system going on. So th this is a simple upgrade. Uh, these these um, these values aren't aren't too important. You could even I, I made one here just with a this little uh, ferrite core. And uh, we're going to test that one too, and we'll see see how much we can block. So this is something you could do yourself, but these are very cheap. This, these were like maybe a uh, dollar fifty, and these were about a dollar each. And so you do need two of them, one for positive and one one for negative, to really uh, block out that noise. So I'm going to get these hooked up uh, one at a time here to the network analyzer, and we'll see uh, we'll see how they work. So first up here is this larger coil. This uh, coil is um, about 18 gauge wire. I measured it measured it with a Mitsu Toyo, and it's about it's about 40 thou. So that's 18 gauge, and uh, this is rated for uh, over here, if we can find it, uh, there it is, 8 amps. So, and uh, if you go look at a spec sheet for 18 gauge wire, it's uh, about 16 amps. So they have a, a fudge factor in there. They don't want this. Uh, they didn't advertise this to operate at its maximum capacity, of course. So we'll take a look. We'll take a look here at the network analyzer. I have the span set up here from the, the lowest these go is uh, one kilohertz. So or one kilohertz. So I have that at the at the lower end, and then at the high end is 100 megahertz, just to give a, a good range of radio frequencies. And the marker here is at CB channel 20, uh, which is 27.205 megahertz, and we're getting uh, about negative 17 dB attenuation on um, from this inductor. So that's great. That means that any radio frequency noise, or not any, but a solid amount of radio frequency noise coming in through your power lines will be attenuated. Uh, and so now we're going to switch over to this other smaller one. Uh, I tested these already. This one being uh, fewer turns is uh, attenuates less signal, but uh, it is a lot smaller. And that's why I got it, because I was afraid these bigger ones might not fit inside my radio. So we'll get that hooked up and we'll check it out. So here's the smaller one hooked up. I added some extension wires just because it was uh, a little bit hard to get into these banana clips. Uh, so we'll take a look over here and we've got a once again, uh, the same the same span and not as much attenuation over here. We're looking at at uh, 27.205 megahertz. We have uh, about negative 7.6 dB. So um, if you want to, you could go look up um, inductor calculations, and it has to do with the number of number of windings and also the uh, magnetic permeability of whatever it's wound around. So that's why um, this is a wound around a core. If you do, you could you could make an air an air wound inductor, um, but it won't work. It won't work as well. It will work, and this is the kind of thing that any something's better than nothing. If you wanted to, you could make these yourself with some magnet wire, and you could just wrap it around a, a piece of wood or something, or just just around a pencil, and then you know uh, slide the pencil out, and you'll have the coil. Uh, 
and that'll that'll work not as well but it, something's better than nothing so if you don't want to buy these uh, you can try making them yourself with some magnet wire if you have that laying around so um, uh, but the rule of th I mean you want you want the, the wire diameter to be enough to handle the power that your radio w the current that it'll consume and also um, not you don't want too big of a physical footprint uh, these are a little bit big and I'm uh, like I said I'm skeptical of them fitting into my radio so just things to keep in mind uh, and now I'm gonna hook up this this homemade one uh, that I wrapped around a this is just some uh, 18 gauge um, stranded wire not n not really what you'd want to use for this but it, it it will work and I have it wrapped around this uh, ferrite um, toroid and uh, which you could probably find laying around in your scrap bin on a an old uh, power supply cable or something like that that you don't need and you can you can see if you can make your own with some magnet wire so we'll, we'll take a look at this one so here's the homemade uh, ferrite hooked up and you can see it's actually performing better than than the uh, this larger uh, choke and we're getting about uh, negative 23 dB attenuation for uh, at 27 megahertz. So that just goes to show you, you can go ahead and, and make these yourself. But if you look at the curve here, as as frequency gets higher, it's actually the um, attenuation is actually lessening. The pass through is is uh, on the rise. So that's that's a little bit fishy. It, it's working very well at the, our target frequency, but uh, you know that there could be a whole bunch of reasons for that. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. But um, if I with magnet wire, you can you can fit more without the uh, thicker insulation you can get uh, you can get more turns through and it'd probably perform better so um, you know this this uh, stranded you know regular old wire is not is not ideal you want magnet wire um, it's easier to work with too as solid core so that's about it for this um, you know like I said just goes to show you it's an easy it's an easy uh, DIY radio modification and uh, hopefully it'll cut down on noise in your radio so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video